All right, guys, there's so much emphasis on throwing farther and getting more power and just being able to rip the disc. Uh, and so I wanted to put emphasis back on control and course management. So I'm going to play around from the blue tees to the longest basket, whatever it is on each hole, uh, with the Berg because it's my slowest disc. It's my shortest disc. I can throw it about 200. If I push it, maybe 225. But I'm going to use this to show you, hopefully, that it's about control and accuracy more than power. Power's great, but you've got to have a base of control. And so uh, let's just go out and see what we can do, and hopefully it'll inspire you to get out there and work on your control as much as you work on your power. Okay, so this really is going to be about playing within yourself and playing smart. The pro move would be to throw it all the way up the hill, try to get around the corner a little bit so you got a shot down the road. Undoable with the Berg. So what I'm going to have to do is make my shots, place them on the road, hopefully, and around the road and down the road. Uh, it's really just knowing what you can do and trying to execute. So let's see what happens. Boy, that first throw out of the car just hurts. <laughs> Nothing sexy about that at all. Uh, I could have pushed up a little bit further. What I've done is I've left myself a little bit of a throw around. Okay, so there's nothing sexy about this. It wasn't a great throw, just right to the middle here, but this is where most people will be. So now I've got to think about placing my shot around the corner so I've got to look down the road. and just hope I don't roll off the edge. So this is about the best I could hope for. It's great right here. Now I've just got to run, going for the straight basket, just got to run it down the road. Hopefully don't get a kick off to the right. It's okay, wasn't great. Body's still warming up. So I'm taking a little bit longer on this first hole to talk, but uh, we're lying three here, baskets there. This hole during tournament play averages over five strokes. And so with the Berg, we're sitting here three with, a, look at the, the basket. Chances are I'm not gonna make it, but a bogey is a good score on this hole from the long pad. Ooh, just ticked it. And to be honest, I should have just laid it under the basket. I was going for it, but if I was playing smart, I would have just gone for a layup for a drop in. Okay, so this one, I just want to try to get over that tree and into the middle area there. I'm not gonna be able to do much more. So this hole's a par four from the blues. So I'm just gonna try to position myself by that ditch, hopefully, so I can get an upshot. There you go for a tap in par. So I'm one over for holes one and two. And to be honest, whenever I'm playing just regular, I assume I'm probably gonna bogey both of them. That way if I do better, it's bonus. But I'm usually planning to be two over coming onto this tee pad just to set the expectation so I'm not bummed out if something funky goes out on the uh, first two holes. So I'm in good shape.
For the record, if I ace the blue basket going for the yellow basket, I meant to go for the blue basket. <laughs> Makes you a little nervous. This is going to hurt on multiple levels. Forehand, Berg. So two options, I could try to pump one over the top, but that's a higher wrist shot and most folks won't do that. So I'm just gonna to try to throw it right down the middle, land in the grass for a easy approach. This is a, a tricky par three, because you do need a little more distance here. So this is a tricky hole because, I mean, that's an easy shot, but then you've got to make this touchy shot, decent distance into here. But if you've got that controlled slight hyzer, it should be no problem. Okay, so this one's saying, we're going to the B basket, it's 498, so it's a par four. So if we could do, I gotta do the math. What, 175, 175, 175, and then a putt? I think my math works out right. I think that's like 525. Yeah, who knows? But you don't have to win it all in one shot. Took a little distance off with that little kick, but still okay. Watch the slope of the hill when you're using your footing because it'll pull your shot off. A couple things to think about. First of all, I was on an uphill slope like this, difficult footing, so I wasn't gonna be able to get as far, but I also pulled a little bit. You're wanting to think about placing your disc. Ideally, I wanted to be over here, and if I was gonna miss, miss left to give me a natural hyzer into the basket. It's not the end of the world, but those are the things you can think about when you're placing your shots. I just gotta try to get it, keep it straight, keep it a little bit to the right so that I've got a chance to go around the corner. Kick back out, kick back out. Thank you. Terrible footing. So, no, 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 no. Oh, phew. did it hit a bush? Did it stop? I think it stopped. Wow, that was headed all the way back down. So that's where having a good landing spot with clean areas around the throw and good footing will make strokes up for you. I had to really push that and almost got penalized for it. All right, so this is where having good footing and not being obstructed with your throws can really save you strokes. That's why just playing to the middle of the fairway, even though it's not sexy, will gain you strokes. All right, so since hole one with the bogey, I've parred every one since, so I'm still one over. All right, I'm not gonna lie, this one worries me. It's a par three, and I tend to screw up and knock it into the ditch. According to the sign, some jerk whoever made that sign, says the blue one's two feet farther than the 
the yellow one. I really want to go for the yellow one, but we're going for the blue because that's how I measured it, I guess. So uh, just don't go in the creek, Pete. Even if I get a good shot, I've got a difficult approach shot. Especially if you smack, oh my gosh. <laughs> If you're going to mess up, you want to mess up big. So instead of smacking the tree, you miss to the right of it. Jeez. Because everything funnels to the left. You want to miss right, but this is a little much. And now, ooh, tricky. Close your eyes. Okay, I'm gonna use this as a teaching moment. There's my spot. Okay, I'm back here. We can all basically agree, I went for it. Instead of doing course management, I should have said, I'm out of position, I gotta settle for a bogey and made a smart shot. Instead, I went for the miracle shot, which I had no right doing. Uh, I had a one in 20 chance of getting through there and I buried myself, so it was gonna be at least a double bogey. Okay, so object lesson right there. Now let's see what would have been the smart thing to do. I got greedy, because I was having a good score, and so I started thinking, push it instead of play smart. That's my fault. What I should do, throw out into the open. You gotta know when you've made a bad shot and don't compound it with another bad shot. This is such a treacherous green, so you don't need to be pushing it even more so that you're going down here. I'm still not guaranteed a bogey with this shot. Might be a little short. I'm trying to match the slope of the, the, the terrain so that it slides and doesn't pick up and roll. All right. So if I just played smart, that would have been two over for the front nine. Okay, so that's the front nine. I, uh, I, I hopefully you got that object lesson right there. I uh, really should have stuck with my plan played smart. If you get in trouble, take your shot, throw back to the fairway, and keep playing on. Your score is usually going to average out better if you play smart than really try to go for the miracle shot. So anyway, let's keep going. Not having a bad round, couple just a couple throws off here or there, but overall playing pretty well. So uh, I hope this is encouraging to you because I'm not throwing far and you can do that too. All right, we're going for the one straight ahead. It's funny, nine and 10 get me, get in my head. Kick left, oh God, you wanna be out in the open. I trapped myself. Better to be right than left, but that doesn't help. And let's face it, the longer par threes are where you can get in trouble if you don't have more power. You've gotta be very careful to get your shots because you don't have the extra distance to scramble out and make it up there. Because to, to, on a par four, you've really got three shots to get near the basket to take a putt. Whereas this, you've got two, and if you don't get the first one, you're gonna be in trouble with the second one a lot of times. Wow. Okay. So, there's a tunnel down. I could run at the basket. But that's not a smart play. We just learned that last time. This is awkward. But as long as I don't fade it out into the creek, I'm okay. Okay. 
that's probably not a normal shot that would happen most of the time. I'm pretty proud of that one. Now don't get me wrong, we want to try to develop distance because distance will save your bacon to be able to get out of trouble, but also if you can throw farther, then you usually have shorter second shots so your margin for error gets in closer. But whatever your game is, work on that precision and then when the power comes, you'll be even that more, much more dangerous. Use your words, Pete. No, 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 I forgot that tree up there. I pulled it to the right. Okay, once again, here's where being off just a little bit hurts. I tried to give it a little extra juice and ended up pulling it and hitting this tree and coming here, which leaves me buried. There's almost no way I can get a, a par from here. If I was out here, at least I'd have, even with the sloped ground, it'd be tough, but I'd have a better shot at the basket. So being back a little bit in the middle of the fairway would be better than being in this. So you gotta, you gotta think for your landings. Wow. <laughs> I could just pop out, but to be honest, even a bad shot's gonna get me about as far as throwing out, unless I hit this tree and knock it back. So this is where sometimes, sometimes you do just have to grip it and rip it. That's about all I got. And here's the danger. You do something like that and all of a sudden you, you feel you need to push. I've got a pretty good forehand, so I could run at the basket from here. The problem is if I miss, catch the hill or the basket, it's going down there and it's two more strokes back up. So the smart play is I wanna throw it up over the basket and land in the grass just to the left of it. Make sure I get up on the plateau. I never noticed that limb hanging down right there. It's kind of right where I want to be. That limb got in my head and I didn't let it float in. I hit it on edge and just rolled it around. I'm good with these object lessons today. Also, to be honest, sometimes you just don't think. When I'm teeing from the short, I aim for just inside this tree right here for a simple putt. I should have just thrown it up and landed in that same spot, but for some reason I thought I needed to go up top. Oh, <laughs> tried to climb out. Okay, if you can't throw far, definitely work on your approach shots and especially your putting. That will make up so many strokes for you. Uh, and speaking of a lot of strokes, this is a long bomber. It's a par four, but man, this is not bird country. No trees, please, no trees. I made it. Boy, it'd been nice to be just a few feet farther over this way. Sorry, right at you. They pinched me off a little bit. <laughs> Dang it. A five with a berg on this is great all day long. Oh boy, rough little hop. I thought it was gonna slide down towards the basket. So a couple things to think about is if you're playing long, especially with a shorter disc, 
most of the birdies are out of reach. So you're really playing for par and trying to negate as many bogeys as possible. But you've got to adjust your, your idea of what your score is going to be because it's just you don't have that many opportunities to get birdies to take out any bogeys you get. You could probably do three, four, and five maybe. This one and uh, one or two more. But really 16 I think is about it and 18. And so you've got about five or six holes you could possibly birdie if you get a great shot. But otherwise you're trying trying to throw for par and just negate as many bogeys as possible. Straight up the hill, miss some trees. <laughs> Go right through some trees, push it off to the left a little bit. Okay, so here's another long par three, and it's 463 to the basket, which means if I could throw 233 feet both shots, I could be right at the basket. Well, I showed you 200, 225 maybe. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to make a long shot to get a, a par. So we're probably gonna get bogey on this. Go into the, to the hole with the mindset of what am I capable of? What should I expect? Takes a lot of the pressure off. And here's the other side of it. If you get a good throw and it's a little downhill, I made it way farther than I thought I would. So I'm actually lifted up. I'm feeling good because I've actually got a chance now. Not a great chance, but a chance. Okay. I'm gonna pretend I'm humble and, oh shucks. <laughs> well, there you go. I parted, but it's like Christmas. I was planning to bogey or, or bet or worse, and I got a par, so it's, it's party time. Okay, so we're going for A. This is treacherous. I love you, Berg. Okay, so let's think for a minute. Let's not play stupid here. I'm going to play for the blue basket and then just drop down to the yellow basket and drop in because the water and OB will kill your score. So even though I could go for it, I could try something crazy and I could do it sometime. It's not worth it. He says and then pulls it to the right. and. <laughs> I promise I was going for the other basket. <laughs> Boy, I could have used it sliding a little more because this is treacherous. Okay, this is where you want to use height and plop the disc. Or slide it, but I'm going to go. Let the downward fall take out any forward momentum. Okay, so on this hole, uh, when I'm throwing normally, I just try to get up to the short tee pad and then come around that way. Anything that gets up the hill and has a look around the corner is gonna be ideal. You don't need to take that big of a chunk around here. That's where people get in trouble. So we're just gonna go up here, get in the middle, so we have a clean shot to the basket. I was wondering that breeze, I pulled the corner a little too much. So I would have been better here, which matches the normal short shot, rather than pinched in here. So now, 
there's my disc. I've got the choice of going outside, we're going for the blue basket, or running through that little window. And uh, it's kind of a crapshoot to the left, so I might as well take the more direct route. Oh, it's fading off, dang it. It still got through. <sighs> Whereas if I'd been 10 feet to the left, I would have had a much better shot at the basket. Okay, so here's the deal. I think I've got enough distance to get there. Uh, there is some wind coming up, but I've also found that when I've tried to lay up short, a lot of times I'll catch a roll or something and it'll still carry me into the creek. So I'm just gonna go for it because the odds, you know, sometimes you just gotta do the math. It's, it's almost equal lay up or go for it. You might as well go for it because something great may happen. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Oh, that's going to fade off. I got that too much on hyzer. Half run, but to just make sure it lands near the basket. All right. Well, there you go. Played it with the Berg beside that one little asterisk hole. Shot about four or five over. You know, you could add a stroke or two to that one I redid. Uh, but I really just played simply down the middle, played a pretty good game, and hopefully that'll encourage you that you don't have to clobber this course, or many courses, if you can just consistently throw it right down the middle. The thing I love about the Berg is it's not going to get too squirrely, so you can just keep punching right down the middle. Anyway, please let me know in the comments if this was encouraging, because uh, I'd love to know what's going on with you, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Take care, guys.